Hello friends, welcome. This is OK at Home DIY and I'm Zaina. Today's video is old things made new. I'm collabing with a few friends. I will tell you about them just a little bit. So I have been spring cleaning and I'm going into some old storage and cleaning things out and getting rid of things. And these old toys that my kids have not played with in years, I decided to give them a new life. Some of them have great memories attached to them and others have just really cute shapes that I just didn't want to get rid of. And this cute little tin box at the end here, my kiddos use this for their kindergarten pencil box, so I wanted to keep it and repurpose it. So a little backstory on this house, I purchased it from the Target dollar spot quite a few years ago, 2017 or 18 for my youngest. This was his Paw Patrol house. So those little mini Paw Patrols that you get at Dollar Tree, this was their little hut or hangout. So he decorated this with as many stickers as he possibly could. So these stickers are so old and they are not coming off very easily, but I am using the hair dryer to kind of break, you know, melt that adhesive. I'm using this scraping tool from Dollar Tree. Actually, this one's my actual Cricut one, but Dollar Tree sells one that looks almost exactly like this, but it's not Cricut. So the next step to get the rest of that sticky adhesive off is to use Goo Gone. I get mine from Dollar Tree and some of the spots that wouldn't rub off very quickly, I kind of let soak a little bit with some Goo Gone and then use my scraping tool and I was able to get that off. Went into the kitchen, washed it with soap and water to make sure all the Goo Gone was off of there. And then I use my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree to rough up the surface. I want to give my paint something to hold on to. So everywhere I could get a really good um, sanding on, I made sure to get that all roughed up. Next, I just came in with ink Waverly chalk paint. I am a plaid ambassador. I'll link plaid paints in the description box below, but Waverly chalk paint is a must. I absolutely love their chalk paint, and this is the color ink. Hit this with a blow dryer to speed up my painting process, and then I came back in with two coats of plaster, and I will make sure that is linked in the description box below came back with my sanding sponge and got all those edges to make sure that black paint underneath came through. The black paint also helps to block any of that green paint coming up and showing with my color plaster. I'm just going to put a few little plants in this and call it good. From a toy shelf to farmhouse decor, I absolutely love it. In this collab, we are taking things that we may already have or purchased secondhand and making them new. I'm excited to be collabing with Sun, CJ, Sharon, Tammy, LaParsha, and Mom. Marjorie, Shawnee, and Cindy couldn't make it, but Shelly, Connie, and Tammy. Please check out their channels linked in the description box below. You won't be disappointed. This cute little teapot is made out of metal and I just couldn't throw this away or give this away. My kids had so many fun memories. There's a few little accessories that came with it. Took this out to the garage, cleaned it up first, and then spray painted with this Rust-Oleum metal finish spray paint. This is called Bright Copper. I absolutely love this color. When it was all dry, brought it in and I decided to decorate this more for spring and summer. I did not get the bottom. That was just for reminiscence purposes. I wanted to be able to pick it up and remember that. This is perfect for country cottage or farmhouse decor. As a backdrop here, I'm using one of my corbels I made in my last video. I will link that in my description box as well as a card.
So this tin box were, was a box that my kiddos used as a pencil box when they were doing kindergarten. It kept the crayons and their pencils and their scissors all in there. And it just reminds me of their younger years. So I wanted to keep it and flip it. Taking some sandy blocks from Dollar Tree and giving this a good sand. I'm roughing up the the sealant here, the smooth, um, the smooth surface, so my paint has something to bond to. I am going to paint this with a Rust-Oleum white spray paint and, and has a flat finish to it. This also bonds to metal. I put it on a piece of paper so I can do kind of that lazy Susan kind of spin thing. I'm also painting in my garage so the wind doesn't blow half my paint away but if you do that just make sure you're wearing something so you don't breathe in all those paint fumes. When it dried I did go back out. It's not quite in shot here but I flipped it to its side and just spray painted the inside and then of course the other side. Just making sure it dries in between that that five minute dry time. Bringing it back in, I want to create a, what is it called? A grain stripe pattern. Sorry, my brain just went dead for a second. I'm taking just a towel and I am defuzzing some of our, de-sticking the back of that tape. Now, I just didn't want that tape to be too sticky to pull off my spray paint. And I'm doing that to this smaller piece of washi tape. I know I did it again. My thin washi tape here is the same color <laughs> as the project I'm painting. Sorry about that just that's just what I have so I put a piece of thin washi tape down and then I put another piece of thin washi tape down going to the other side I put a thin piece of washi tape down and then I'm going to peel up that big big piece of washi tape so that's going to be my biggest stripe in the grain stripe Next, I, since I have two pieces of the small washi tape there, I am peeling up just that one piece in the middle. So this is a spacer. And again, I'm going to come over on the other side with some big wide washi tape. This is just going to give me a stencil for my grain stripe. I always like to rub them down really well and then go over the top of them with some Mod Podge. This helps to just seal the edges and I don't get as many leaks of paint this way. So after that I go right over the top of it with some Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. I'll put that in the description box below as well. I'm not even going to wait for my paint to dry. I'm going to pull up my strips of tape right away. Always make sure I have a little bit of tails on the tape so that I can just grab them and pull them off. Look at that. Isn't that just, I love that when you finally reveal that. Next, I'm taking some washi tape and putting it around the edge just as decor. I ordered this in from Amazon, but I really didn't get a good uh, view of this washi tape to show you which one it is, but it just has like a, a green in there, kind of the same as the celery. I'm taking the sanding sponge, I am sanding off some of the paint. I like the vintage farmhouse country cottage look to where there's a little bit of wear and tear. So I'm making sure that I can close the lid and use it as well as just giving it a little bit of character there. Taking this wall sticker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put this right on top. I just kind of cut it around the edges a little bit to make it match trimming up the edge and I love it bringing in some succulents to make this spring and or summer and just kind of setting them in there. I love how this turned out. I think all three of these projects are my favorite because they have sentimental value, but I actually can use them to decorate with.
I truly am thankful for all my returning subscribers. And if you are new here, I'd love to invite you to subscribe. Click that notification bell so you'll be notified in all the videos that I upload. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this content. Make sure you check out my friends that I'm collabing with today. And until the next time, everyone, you have a good one. Bye. Are you cute dog? Are you cute dog? Are you cute dog? Putty, go play. You really let me get your face, do you cute dog? These dogs are begging me for my apple core. Do your dogs do that? <laughs>